everyone. Welcome to this demo on selection tools. Um, I'm going to walk you through some of the basic selection tools and why some of them work better than others for some scenarios. And I'm basically going to recommend the ones that I like the most. Um, but there are different scenarios that you might want to use different selection tools. So to start, I'm going to actually um, pull out my tools right here just so everybody can see them. Um, the selection tools are mainly in the top part, okay? So if I go here, and you can see that there are a lot of tools. We're gonna to focus on the first ones, okay? So the first one, we already covered that one, is the Move tool. We've used it a lot. But right underneath, we have the Marquee tool. Now, I wanna point out that every time that you see a little arrow on the bottom right of your tool that means that there are more tools within that tool so to get to them you have to click and hold it down so right now I'm holding down and then you can select either of them so now I'm gonna select the elliptical marquee tool so I can show you how to select this Apple so that is the first tool it's the marquee tool the shortcut is M if you hover over it you'll see it right here so that's the tool that we're gonna be using okay so the marquee tool now before we start as we do always, I'm going to do Command J to duplicate the background, and I'm going to put I'm going to put copy for this one. Okay, so we're going to start doing a selection. So this apple right here, right? Let's say that we want to take it to a different image. Um, the marquee tool it has um, good possibilities to be used for different scenarios. Most of the time, I use them when I don't need precision. Okay. Um, in this case, if I was going to select this apple, I probably wouldn't do it with the marquee tool. And I'm going to explain why in a little bit. But if I click here and drag it out, you will see that it's kind of like an anchor point and then you can pull it out. So wherever you start clicking, that will be your anchor point. Okay. Now, if you move it, it will distort, you know, to an oval. If you want a perfect circle, you have to hold down shift. So right now I'm holding down shift. It doesn't matter how I pull up or down it's always going to be a perfect circle that just changes the diameter of it. Okay, I'm holding down. If I let go of the shift, then it goes back to this. Now, all this time, I've been holding down my mouse. If I let go of my mouse, it basically commits to that moment of that marquee tool. Now I can move it. Okay, so it's important that you don't let go of the mouse until you're ready to commit to that selection. Okay, if you want to deselect something, you're going to press Command D and it deselects or deactivates that selection. Okay, so deselect. Remember, um, if you don't remember the shortcut, right now we're dealing with selection, so it makes sense that if you go to the top part of your window right here on the select, you have deselect. Okay, it's Command D. So anything that has to do with selections will be under select. Um, so that's the shortcut, and that's where you find it. Now let's start again. Let's try to select this apple. I'm going to click here and drag it out. Okay. Um, the problem is that I want, I started on the edge, but you can see that it didn't quite anchor it on the end. If you want to move the anchor point, you have to hold space bar and then you can move the circle. I'm not letting it go my mouth yet. I'm just moving it around on my uh, screen, but I can reposition it. Let's say somewhere here and then let go of the space bar and try to see, uh, you know, the problem with this marquee tool, as you can see, this apple doesn't have a perfect circle or a perfect oval. So there's no way for me to get exactly the shape of this apple. So in this case, you can see that the marquee tool does not work well. I can do something like this, you know. Um, let's say I want to do that, and that's my selection. Okay. So right now we have a selection right here. So every time you see these little lines that look like walk, that's what we call walking ants that means that you have an active selection, okay? So every time you see these little dotted, you know, black and white lines moving, means that you have the walking ants, which means that you have a selection. Sometimes it can be hard because you can do a little selection by accident and you don't see it noticeable on the screen. So if for some reason you're trying to do something and then you realize that you can't do it, there are two things that could be happening. You either have a selection and you're not noticing it, or you have something in the transform um, setup. So if you want to deselect it, what was the shortcut? Remember, Command D. 
then I deselect it. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you, you know, what you can do with this. So, for example, I can make a selection, let's say, like that. And one thing you can do if you press Command J, if I'm selecting on this copy and I press Command J, because I had a selection, it will basically copy that selection onto a layer on top of whatever layer you had selected, okay? So I'm gonna hide this so you can see it. So that was what I just copied, okay? So I had a selection on this copy layer and because I had a selection on that layer and I press Command G, it only copies what I had selected. If I didn't have a selection, I would copy the entire image, basically a copy of the copy. But in this case, because I had a selection, it only copied the apple, what I had selected, okay? So that is one thing you can do with the selections, right? You can make that. And then now you can move this apple wherever I want. So for example, now I have that apple by itself, okay? With no hand or background, right? So that's one thing that you can do with the selections once you have it. So I'm gonna show you something else that you can do with the selection. Let me go back on my history until I have it here. Another thing that you can do is if you go to, for example, hue and saturation, I can click here. And because I had a selection, automatically, when I click on the adjustment, it already applied a mask. Because it, it, the Photoshop is thinking like, oh, you have this selected. If you, if you added an adjustment, then you want to do something to that area that you have selected only. So it basically changed the area that I had selected to have white and everything else is block. So if I go here to my hue and saturation and I change the hue, you will see that it will only change the hue of that that was selected, okay? Now in this case, it doesn't work well because you can see that line and it looks ugly, right? But you get the idea. This is one of the reasons why you wanna use um, selections. You can combine selections with mask. But let's try to do something a little bit better. So I'm gonna delete this layer and that was the marquee tool. The same will apply with a rectangular marquee, marquee tool. This works well if you have like a door or a building or something that's straight, right? Um, because then you can do a quick selection like that. And the same, same thing as the elliptical one. If you pull out, it has an anchor point and then you can do, you know, rectangle like that or like that, or you can try to make a square. If you wanna make a perfect square, same as the elliptical tool, you hold shift. And then it does a perfect square and you can scale it down or up, okay? And if you hit, hit spacebar, you can reposition. Right now I'm, I'm hitting shift and spacebar. The shift to maintain the rectangle, sorry, the square, and the spacebar to move it from that anchor point, okay? As soon as I let go of the mouse, it would just commit to that. Now I have the walking end, so I have a selection, okay? If I press command J, then I end up with that square that I had selected in a layer by itself, okay? So let's delete that. So that is basically the marquee tool. Remember, you hold it down, you have two options, you have the elliptical and the rectangular marquee tool. Now let's try some other selection tool. Right underneath, we have the lasso tool. The lasso tool, um, basically, you have to draw with the mouse around whatever you wanna select, okay? so. Oh, lasso tool right here. So lasso tool. Now you can see that right underneath you have the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool, okay? So the lasso tool, um, I'm gonna draw, let's say here, just so you can see it. Whatever shape you draw, that's the shape that it will get, okay? So again, you draw a shape, that's the shape that will be. If you wanna make this apple selected, then you have to kind of carefully go. Now, this tool does not work well when you want precision because you're moving with the mouse and then you get to the edge. Oh, do you see that bump? You get to the edge of the mouse and you raise it and you keep doing it. And it's gonna be very hard to follow all this because the problem with this tool, as soon as you let go, it will basically activate your selection. So if I let go here by accident, it, boom, it closes the gap for you. So it's a tool that you don't want to use when you have a long distance to cover, right? Um, it is useful for quick selections. Let's say if I want to select this to do something, I just go like that. That works well. Now, but if you want precision, you probably don't want this tool because it's kind of tricky, right? Um, 
to do a selection because if you let go by accident, it's just going to do it for you. Okay, so you have to be careful with that one. Now, underneath here is the polygonal lasso tool. That one works a little bit better because that one you can do straight lines. So, for example, if you have a house or a door or you know, a table, something that's straight lines, you can click and basically does an anchor point, and then you click, that's another anchor point. So you can do more geometrical shapes easier. Okay. Now, this one, how it works is once you want to close the gap, you have to go to the first anchor point. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. Once you go here, you can see that if I hover over it, it basically shows that little circle. I haven't clicked yet. I'm just putting my mouse over it. And once I see that, I can click and basically activate the selection. Okay. So I'm going to do Command D. I'm going to do it one more time. So you can click, 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 click. And then when you hover over it, then you click, then it activates the selection. Okay. So that's a pretty cool tool for anything that has geometrical shapes. So Command D. I'm going to deselect it. And if I go here, we have another one that's the magnetic lasso tool. Now this one is a, what we call like a little bit like a smart tool because it tries to identify the contrast or the edges of things and it kind of like snaps to it. Now in this case on the top part of the apple it will work really good. So how it works is you start clicking and dragging okay, and it will start putting dots. So look if I go a little bit outside right, it will kind of snap there but here if I try to keep it close enough it will do a decent job of identifying where the edges are. Even if I go a little bit in, you see, it's still getting the edge because it's magnetic, okay? Now, the problem is gonna be on the bottom. So when I get here, things might get a little bit more interesting because you see, um, there's reflection on the apple and it might not recognize well where the edge is. So. And the way that this works is it identifies the edges or the contrast difference between two tones on the image and then it snaps to those tones differences. Now, if the image has really drastic contrast, let's say for example here the edge of the apple and the white background, then it will work great. Okay? But there were some mistakes, like there was one, there was one. So you'd still have to be careful. You can see here that if I zoom in. Let's see how that looks when I zoom in. You can see that the apple and then it kind of went in because the apple actually follows here, but it had, oh, let me close that one and deselect it. It had this reflection right here that it was hard for the tool to identify. So all this part, it was a problem. And then here too, because it kind of, you know, blends a little bit. Um, but in this area here, because it's very drastic, the change, it works perfect. Okay, so it does work well for some scenarios where you want to do a quick selection and they're in a background, um, it will work well. So those are the lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. Now the other one that we have underneath here is the quick select tool. You can get it by pressing W. This one is also a smart tool and it works really well. And the way that this one works is... Um, it's, it looks like a brush, so you have to be careful that sometimes you have the brush selected and you think it's, it's this one, or you have this one and you think it's the brush because it literally looks the same. So you have to be always aware of what tool you have selected by looking at here. Now this one it works the same as the brush in the sense that you can make it bigger with the right bracket key, or you can make it smaller with the left bracket key. You can also change the diameter here by going to um, the size. Okay, so. How this one works is if I start clicking and dragging, let's say if I click there, it selects the tones from that area. Now, if I click and keep dragging, it will keep adding those tones and math mathematically kind of knows like, oh, you want this tones, you want that tone. And then suddenly, oh, all these are similar. And then boom, it kind of selects the entire apple. So I didn't have to go around the entire apple to do this selection. Now, similar to the magnetic lasso tool, which is also a smart tool, you can see that there's some areas here and at the bottom that didn't do a good job. So if the image, again, is well-defined and there's good contrast at the edges, it will work great. 
Now, there are moments where it will not work great, okay? So the cool thing about this tool is that it does a quick selection very fast. Now, you can still go in and modify. So if I make my brush a little bit smaller, not the brush, sorry, the quick select, um, if you hold Option down, you can kind of change or add to your selection. So for example, if I select the finger by accident there, I can press Option and undo that, okay? If by default it's on plus, so you can add to it. But if you do something wrong, you can press Option and go like this. So this one is different than the other ones that we have covered because you can modify it after it's done, which is cool because then here, for example, I can just go here and add it. Now you have to look up here where the toolbar is on the top, you have to make sure that you're on the plus right now. I'm in the middle one selected, okay? You can actually have it by default to be only minus or a new selection. So I'm right now having on the plus so I can keep adding to it, okay? So I'm adding this mistakes that it did, okay? And for example, let's say here I need a minus. So I press option and then I subtract that part right here to make sure that it's not included. So from the tools that I have covered so far, for this scenario, this one works better because I can modify it afterward and fine tune it. So I'll make sure I don't include anything I don't want. Okay, so if I zoom out, you can see that from the other tools that we have covered, it does a pretty good job. So it's a great tool to use. Now, inside this quick selection tool, there's also the magic wand tool. If I click here, this one works a little bit different. Okay, I'm gonna deselect that so I can start over. Now, this one is basically it's called a magic wand because it's like with one click. Okay, so I click and it does that. Now, if you press shift, you can keep add, add more to it. So I can keep clicking shift and clicking and it keeps adding to that selection. Okay, now in this case, you can see that it's not working perfect. It's forgetting some areas. So you can change that with tolerance right here. The higher the tolerance, the more similar tones it will pick from that click that you did. So imagine that this tool, how the way that it works is, if I click here, it's gonna select that in the surrounding area and think like, oh, you want these types of tones and then add it to the selection. So if I click here and go like, okay, so that kind of tone you want, and it will make a selection for you. It's keeping these out because the values are very bright and these ones are darker than where I click that was here. So if you want that tolerance to be even bigger, you raise this, let's say to 60. And then I go here and click. You can see that now that area is bigger, right? So the bigger the number on the under tolerance, the more it will tolerate of those tones that you click. Okay, so for example, if I click here 80 and I click again, now it's even bigger, right? So you can see that it's getting bigger and bigger. What about 90? Boom, even more. So now we're getting closer, right? Um, I can put 100 and see what how that looks. Now it's picking a lot more. Now in this case, because this apple has so many tones, it's not working that great because it has this stem here. It has like this shadow areas are dark. But if you have somebody with a red t-shirt and it's all the same color, this will work great because then you can click and it will select the entire t-shirt. Um, for example, here on the hand, you see, it even picked the background because I was at 100. So that's not, let's put it back to 32. That was the original number. You see, that's working better. You can probably get close enough to the hand if you keep going higher in the tolerance. So this one works great when you have a solid color. Let's say you have a, a blue wall and you want to select the entire blue wall and it has the same lighting and it's just flat. This will work great. Right. In this case, because there's so many tones on this image, it won't do a great job. OK, so that's the magic wand. So these are the ones that I want you to focus on for now. There is a different lab that we're going to do with the um, pen tool, but that's a separate selection tool that I'm going to cover later. For what I want you to do for this lab is, for example, I'm going to select this one because it was the one that I realized that worked the best for this image. I'm going to do a selection of the apple. Let's say I'm not going to fine tune it. You can fine tune it, but I'm going to do a selection of the apple and you're going to go to hue and saturation right here and you're going to change the color of the apple. Okay. So I want you to just change it to something, you know, different. Um, 
whatever tone you want. I just want to see the apple a different color and not the hand. So I want you to do a selection. So now, as you can see, we're introducing something new, which is a selection. But now we're bringing back what we learned before, which is the masking. And now we can combine that selection with the mask to make adjustments to a particular area of the image and you can make the same thing for example if you want to select a background of an image and make it darker you can do a selection and then click on the adjustment and then you can alter that part only okay so this is a really cool way of incorporating masking and selections together so this is the lab that you have to do Make sure that you select the apple only and you change it to a different color, okay? And you can use any of the adjustments. You don't have to use hue and saturation. You can use color balance or any of the other filters or effects, okay? But I want you to only apply it with the selection and a mask, okay?